Welcome to Rabbit and Snail's Film Talk as we look at the 100 greatest films of all time. Certainly the 100 greatest films in our humble opinion. I'm delighted to be joined by the marvellous Morris Bright MBE. Hello and welcome to Film Talk. Lovely, lovely to be here again. And what's going to be, I can't wait because you always bring up such fantastic movies to our, to our list of the greatest films. Well, it's getting very difficult. We've all done this before, it's getting very difficult. But I've got a film which I grew up with and which I've revisited several times since I've been somewhat older, and which I adore. Uh, and it's a crime caper, a crime thriller with comedy elements. Wow. It was made at Pinewood in 1959. It was called The League of Gentlemen. Oh, fantastic. What a great film. Well, in, indeed, so much so that the BBC hit cult comedy series The League of Gentlemen with Mark Gattis and Steve Pemberton uh, was named after it in homage mm. uh, uh, to the film. But the film itself uh, stars Jack Hawkins as... Uh, rather frustrated uh, chap from the uh, been treated badly by the armed services so he gets together this rather motley crew of people who served in the uh, in the army who've all got a skeleton in the cupboard and all need a couple of quid and he brings them together to conduct a heist because his view is they've been trained by the best they are service people in how to get in and out of places in the war they should be able to get in and out of a bank and commit the perfect robbery and leave them all with enough money to look after themselves it's a great theory it's, it's a great premise. theory. It's a great theory, and it's a great film. And the cast is quite extraordinary. So, as well as Jack Hawkins, um, you've got people like Richard Attenborough, you've got uh, Roger Livesey, you've got Nigel Patrick, all people you would recognise. Some great, um, great character actors: mm. Norman Bird, Terence Alexander. Very small cameo from a very young uh, Oliver Reed. You've got Nat, Nat, Nat Newman's in it as well, uh, and that's because Brian Forbes, her husband, wrote the screenplay. So he's in it. And he wrote the screenplay. And in fact, he won a BAFTA for the screenplay. Um, so good was the quality of the script. The acting, of course, brought it all out. But it's, it's, it is a thriller. It's got some, it deals with some human issues, relationships, frustrations, but at the same time, a comedy element. And what you would think would be the perfect heist, wouldn't it? These people who would know exactly what they're doing. But the quality of this film just takes it a little bit above your average uh, late 50s, early 60s. Um, Crime caper. Yeah, it is. Yeah. In the 1950s, Rank, uh, the Rank organisation were going through a very difficult time financially. They owed huge sums of money. Uh, they'd expanded too fast and too quickly. And so in their film division, they slapped very uh, heavy budgets on their films. So in the 1950s, they weren't allowed to spend more than £150,000 on a film, which in today's money is around about £4 million. When well, you've got high-end drama being made for that, that's low-budget film. And that's for everything. Very few films, I think, other than maybe The Battle of the River Plate. And didn't they also have to take... The, they could only cast from the rank... Yes, Contract players. So it kept the cost down, and as I think maybe other than the Battle of the River Plate, they kept within those budgets. So you had the Doctor films had to be made within those. You had the Carry On films that had to be made. They all had to be made on low budgets to try and attract people into the cinemas uh, and to see if they could get their takings up. Now the League of Gentlemen came just at the end of that, as the boots was the foot was being taken off the pedal, allowing a little bit more spend. But it only cost one hundred ninety-two thousand pounds. Again, about four, four and a half million pounds. And to get the quality of the actors and the quality of the production and the script, and you're talking big name people here. You're talking mm. Richard Attenborough and Jack Hawkins. And what I like about the film, it's an ensemble play. So even though Attenborough was probably the biggest star of their lot at the time along with Jack Hawkins, he doesn't try and take top position. In fact, he's not there. If you look at the, 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 the list of who's who and where's where, he's not at the very top because they all love being together. And there's some wonderful shots behind the scenes of them working as a team uh, and, 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 having, and having fun filming. One of the funniest stories that I've got about this is I met uh, a very famous, a very well-known character actor called David Lodge. You know him. Mm. He had appeared with everyone. Peter Sellers. Always Peter, Peter Sellers, Norman Wisdom, with everyone. He was a very good friend of Peter Sellers. And he told me a story that he had one day's filming. And that's what he used to do. He used to day here and a day there. He said, he got one day's filming on The League of Gentlemen. And he said, it was about £100. And he met up with Terence Alexander. They were all getting their makeup. And Terence Alexander's got a bit more in the film. I think he plays Nanette Newman's frustrated husband. She's sort of withholding the conjugals. He's, he says, oh, yes. He said, well, I've got, I'm on the film. I've got £300. He said, well, I'm only, doing, I'm only doing a day. I've only got £100. You know, actors alike. So they go to film this sequence at the back of Pinewind, just about to film the sequence, a fog. The fog comes down. OK, it's that time of year. Fog comes down. Cut. Go away, come back tomorrow. The fog was there, and the fog was there for days and days and days. On the fifth day, the fog rises, 
and they managed to get the shots that they needed. And in fact, if you look at the film, it's a little bit hazy when the AA man's driving through on his on his motorbike, and they d- did it on the fifth day. David Lodge goes, there you go, five days, five hundred pounds. <laughs> Terence Alexander does the whole film and gets three hundred. So that's what actors are like. Um, but it's but it was a it was a lovely film. It's a lovely film to watch. Um, and the only frustration about the film is that they don't get away with it. Yeah. You want them to. You really do. You're you really do. rooting for them. They're not allowed to. As you know, many, many films it, it, you, you used to watch, you couldn't have a crime caper and say crime pays, which was such a terrible shame because you know what? They were such a nice bunch of people. You kind of wanted them to get away with it. So that was the only only sad part was at the very end, you know they were going to get caught, which is bad, really. We shouldn't really make heroes of, of criminals. But it was Jack Hawkins. But some of them you felt deserved a little bit of... They'd had such a terrible run of luck. And uh, as characters, they were really, you know... One was... Kind of implied, you know, a little bit of blackmail was yes. going on. Yeah. And, you know, they were in some ways victims. Well, they were. They were down but, on their luck. Yes, they all had. Look, they all had their, as I say, a skeleton in the cupboard, whatever that skeleton mm. was. So, as I say, Terence Alexander's got some um, Nanette Newman as a wife who he can't afford to keep up with her, and you know he wants to try and enamour himself to her. You've got Norman Bird, who's I think you're right, is being uh, being blackmailed, or there's there's this going on. You've got Nigel Patrick who needs the money. He was in the army with him, uh, and Jack Hawkins was very keen on on the character, very keen on saying, well, you know, I'm I'm the top bod. I'll get this, and everyone, you'll get that, and they'll. And he said, no. Everyone gets the same. And then we said, oh, I don't know about the Nigel Patrick's going, I don't know about this, all this socialism. Everyone gets the same, but but we'll take it, you know, that kind of stuff. So there was a camaraderie that was mm. there and it builds in very quickly. Um, and I think there's a line at one stage where Richard Attenborough says, he's balmy. He should either be locked up or he should be running the country or something like that. <laughs> of Jack Hawkins, who's obsessed with the bad way he's been treated and believes that if you do everything exactly right, the way they've been trained, they can't be beaten. Um, so it's actually quite a, it's a great story, as I say, and the, 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 the script itself won a, uh, won a BAFTA, and it was a great camaraderie. And I remember when I, when I both interviewed both Nanette and also interviewed Brian, because Brian was very kind to me when I was writing books about film studios many years ago, and he invited me over um, to, to his house, um, and we used to sit there and talk for ages about film. And he was an incredibly talented man. So he was an actor, he was a writer, he was a producer, he was a director. We're filming this particular episode here at Elstree Studios. And from the late 60s for five years, he was a managing director of these studios. Mm. So there's nothing he couldn't do. He was very generous to ensure that all his actors uh, got a fair share of all the good lines. He spread it around. But he was an extraordinarily talented man in whatever he did. And Nanette Newman was his wife. They were together uh, for 60 years. And so she'd get small roles in some of his films. Uh, but she, um, she was probably his biggest fan. Um, and she said when they first met, they met because she was a, an extra on a film and he just sort of saw her walking towards her. And that was it. It was love at first sight. Wow. And uh, they were together for 60 years. So there's a bit of romance going on in there as well. But it's one of those sto- films that you just watch, particularly in the winter on a Saturday afternoon. I, I call it that Saturday matinee feeling. You want to feel warm. You want to feel happy. Familiar faces, lovely scripts, a great story. Um, and it's a really lovely film, so it's one of my favourites. And a, a, absolutely a worthwhile addition to our top 100 of the greatest films ever. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you agree with that, fantastic. Leave a comment down below to tell us why. If you don't agree with that and you're not quite sure, well, still leave a comment down below and tell us why. But either way, do subscribe to our channel. We'd love to see you. Thank you for, do, for watching. And thank you, Morris, for being on Film Talk. Love it. Thank you very much for having me.